Hi, I'm Michael Cioni, and on this vignette of Who, What, Why, When, Where, we're going to be discussing the differences between different flavors of 24 frames per second video. Now, the what behind this is that there are three different main flavors of 24 frame progressive recording, and the three are 24 progressive native, 24p standard, and 24p advanced. 24p progressive native is actually taking 24 intro frames per second and recording them natively at a 24 frame signal. 24p standard is taking a traditional 2-3 pull down cadence that changes the version from 24 to 2997. The last is the 24p advanced which records a 24 frame signal at a 30 frame time base and it uses an advanced version of the 3-2 pull-down in order to record a 2-3, 3-2 pull-down. This is very helpful because it allows you to record 24 and remove that pull-down using basic NLE softwares and is extremely popular to be used with firewire driven devices. Why not always just shoot 24 progressive native? If you're shooting 24 progressive native and you're only getting 24 frames per second and there's nothing else being put into the image, then you might as well just ignore the other ones, right? Why do the other ones even exist? I guess that makes the question, why not just 24 progressive native? Well, the answer is because in the United States, broadcasters will broadcast the images at 60 hertz. 60 hertz is going to run at 30 frames per second. So if we're broadcasting at 30 frames per second, but we're acquiring at 24 frames per second, that means for every four frames of film, there are five frames of video. Well, those time bases don't match up. So we needed to come up with a way in which we can marry 24 frame acquisition, which aesthetically and cinematically is desirable, with 60 hertz broadcast. And the answer was 24p standard, a standard 2-3 cadence pull down that enables the four frames of film to merge into five frames of video without being detectable. So why the advanced? Well, the advanced is there so that we can record at a base 30 and then easily remove using any number of nonlinear editing devices to get us back to a base 24. That base 24 will have no interlacing whatsoever and you'll get back to as if you shot it at 24 progressive native in the first place. Likewise, if you're shooting 24p standard, you're going to be able to record with the 2-3 pull down in it and actually record 24 frames at 30. And that's going to enable you to have the aesthetic of 24 frame image with a 30 frame time base. So you want to shoot 24 standard if you want it to look like 24 but deliver it at 30. And you shoot 24p advanced if you want to acquire it 30 and make it deliver at 24. When do we actually use these different flavors? Well, the way I look at it is you determine the flavor based on the way you're going to distribute or deliver the project. For example, let's say you're going to deliver on film or HD tape. Well, an HD tape or film is going to run at 24 frames per second. So we're better off recording at 24 progressive natively to deliver native frames to the end of the project or shooting 24p advanced, removing those extra frames and delivering 24p native. Now, what if you're shooting for broadcast HD or NTSC video? Well, that's a base 30 frame rate. So you might be able to shoot 24p native and do a telecine at the end of the process and actually convert the files to base 30 or you could shoot 24p standard the entire time and be able to deliver 30 at the end of the job. And then lastly you have online distribution. With online it's kind of very interesting because originally a lot of people were shooting 24p standard so they had a film look with a 30 frame delivery but they quickly realized that when you're uploading to the web you can actually shrink your file sizes by simply shooting at 24p native or 24p advanced and converting that to 24p native. That way you're getting a smaller file size and retaining the film look. Here's a hint. Converting 24 frames into 30 is a lot easier than converting 30 to 24. So when in doubt, I recommend shooting at 24p native or advanced and saving the 30 frame conversion if you need it for the end of the process. Now the good news is with all the technological advancements in cameras and NLE systems today, you can almost always shoot 24p native. And because it's easier to convert that format to 30 when you need it, you can either stay in 24 or always change for 30.